Okay, so in our final video of this unit, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the trapezoid rule. The trapezoid rule is another way of approximating um, the area under the curve, but this time we're drawing trapezoids instead of drawing rectangles. And so what I've got is just kind of a funky graph, and what I'm doing is this y sub 0 just means the initial y value. This is the y sub 1, y sub 2. These are all the different heights that are involved, and then finally we end up with y sub 5. The delta x's, these are the heights of the trapezoid. So really what I have is this is like, this is the height, these are my parallel sides, and then this is kind of the diagonal line or the, the angle line that connect those heights, and so that's my trapezoid. And th what we do is we apply this, we apply this formula, it kind of looks more complex than it is. Uh, the trapezoid rule with n number of trapezoids is the upper limit minus the lower limit over 2n it's 2n because remember that for the area of a trapezoid, just kind of by a side note, the area of a trapezoid way back when you learned it in geometry is one half of the height times base 1 plus base 2. And the height in this particular case is the delta x. So this is delta x. That's how much I'm going up by in the x values. That's the upper limit minus the lower limit over the number of trapezoids. So we plug that in. That 2 comes from the 1 half right there. That part of it's the height, a 1 half of the height. And then we count the first height only once, because it's only part of one trapezoid. And then notice all the interior heights we count twice. We count them twice because they're part of two trapezoids. So y1 is part of the trapezoid on the left and the trapezoid on the right. y2, trapezoid left, trapezoid to the right. We keep on doing that until we get to the last trapezoid. And then on the last trapezoid, we only count that height one time again, because it's just part of this last trapezoid. That's it. We add up that area. Again, if the delta x is a constant, or the height is a constant, you can apply this formula. Oftentimes on the AP exam, they'll let this delta x not be a constant, and then you just find the area of each trapezoid individually. That's all you got to do. That's going to approximate the value of this integral from a to b of f of x dx. So let's take a look at an example of that, and I'll, I'll crunch the numbers on this one for you. So let's say we have this, uh, this equation here. I think, yeah, I think this is the same one that we did in our previous one. I think it's this. It's the integral from 0 to 3 is 16 minus x squared dx. And in this particular case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 trapezoids. n equals 6 trapezoids. First thing you can find is delta x. That's going to be your height. It's going to be 3 minus 0 over 6, or 1 half. And that means that this is 1 half, and then that goes up to 1, and so on and so forth. And so the way it looks is this. Um, it's going to be um, well, if I apply the formula, trapezoid 6, it's going to be 3 minus 0 over 2 times 6. That's the way I wrote it out before. And then it's going to be f of, my first f value is going to be 0. And then 2 times f of 1 half, because that's an interior value. f of 1 half is part of that trapezoid. If I number them in that trapezoid, it's part of 1 and 2. And then 2 times f of 1. 2 times f of 3 halves, 2 times f of um, 2, 2 times f of 5 halves, and then finally f of 3, which is the last trapezoid. It's just that last one. If I number this, this is 3, this is 4, uh, this is 5, and this is 6. Oh boy. They're trying to shut me out of here, but I'm not going away. So uh, these trapezoids, that's my six trapezoids, notice that this one on the height of number three right here, f of three, is just part of that one trapezoid. So if I work this down, this, this part right here is going to be one-fourth. Um, if I plug in f of zero into that, I get 16. That's the first height right there, plus two times f of one-half. Oh, i got to get back to my calculator. Let's see if we can just do this in my calculator. Uh, maybe not. Let's see here. That's going to start at 0, go up by 1 half. Okay. So it's going to be 2 times 15.75, 2 times 15. Two times 13.75 and 12. Two point nine times seven five and then seven. Mm -hmm. 
and notice that on that last one, let me just show you that's f of 3, uh, just 7, we're not going to count it twice, we're just going to count it's just 7. So plus 7, I'm just going to put that in there right there like that. And it's just a matter of crunching the numbers, you know, put it in, whatever. It'll be easier for you guys because you don't have to flip back and forth between your calculator, your Promethean board, and um, all that stuff. You can just add them all up. So don't forget that 0.25 or the one fourth out front. It's about 38.875. Notice that's a little bit of an underestimate. I think the exact value of that was uh, 39. It's a little bit of an underestimate, but it's getting closer and closer. So in this section, just ask you to do some problems approximating what the area would be using your midpoint approximation, your left endpoint approximation, your right endpoint approximation, and your trapezoid rule. We'll pull all these together. We'll look at some area problems in class from old AP exams. We'll connect the definite integral with area. And then we'll go ahead and test it up. Best of luck.